to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to call the meeting to order, but before we get to our regular business bill booklet, I told uh, Bill that we would let him come up. He's got another meeting to get to. So, Stephanie, if you and, and, uh, and uh, the... Uh, I'm not sure what your title is. Are you chief police of police? Chief. Is that your title? Yeah. Okay. If the chief of police of Rockville would come up and tell us what you have, what, what that way he can get on going and get to his other meeting. Sure. So come on up, guys. We have uh, an application for the to use the opioid funds to purchase um, drug testing strips. Um, attached to the application is a list of the different tests that will be uh, that can be mm -hmm. recognized through these testing strips and Bill's here with me to if you have, have any questions, questions or okay. concerns I, I told him um, I'm not sure who it was I was speaking to the Ian. other what was it Ian yes I think it was Ian um, it's not typical that we would require you to come to present these things. We really give all that independence and that decision making to the LCC. The only thing we've not done, because the state wouldn't allow us to do that, was to turn over the Oakland and check the LCC to spend as they choose. We have to approve those things. But I can't imagine either of us second guessing you guys once you made a decision that this is a grant that you seek for. I hate to take your time. I appreciate you coming. But uh, Steph, I just want you to know, Steph, that, uh, unless we have some reason, I don't see us ever questioning a, a decision that the LCC board makes. And so if he has convinced you that it's a work, well, good use of that money, and you come tell us that your board has decided to do that, I can't imagine us not going along with that. Yes. So feel free to, I mean, bring anybody you want to bring any time, but I know they're all busy people, but just don't feel you have to. Because okay. Unless there's some overriding thing, I can't imagine us even questioning really why you made the decision you made because that's why we have you to if we're going to do that we don't need you guys we'll make those decisions right. so yeah, as far as I'm concerned you make those that we just okay. stamp the real need for us to approve all grants two reasons one because it is money controlled by the, the county that we have to approve mm -hmm. and the second is we're required by the state to see all grant requests not to to judge the worthiness of those but to make sure that we don't have two competing entities in the county going for the same money and that in which case we are obligated then to choose one to submit rather than letting both submit. So um, I would say rest assured, most anything that you bring to us that your board has decided you want to go for and there's funds available to use that for, mm -hmm. that we're going to support you on that. So okay. unless you guys have a question for Michael on what those, all those tests do, then I, I don't see a reason for you to have to stay. I know you got other meetings to get to. I appreciate you coming in. But, but uh, why don't we go ahead and take care of that business yeah. while we're here? I'd make the motion then that we okay. Go ahead, Booth. I say I'd make a motion that motion that we approve the uh, uh, grant uh, that uh, has been submitted by the LCC. And I'll second. All in favor, Aye. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. You're welcome. It. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Now we'll get into our regular business. We have minutes to approve from October seventh. Make a motion to approve the minutes for October 17th. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Next we have payroll to approve. We have two. Uh, our normal payroll of $263,017.91. And then the Union Hospital Security payroll of $1,428.80. I'll make a motion to approve both payrolls as presentable for and I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, thank you for telling us that. <laughs> 
You still celebrating this? I am. <laughs> as long as I can remember which one it is, which I'm going to be okay. Jim, there's one right there. Yeah, all right. That'd be more of a reason to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know what's going on when you're a little kid? You ask them what your birthday is. It's my, my, I'm nine and a half. Well, for old people, you think I'm 74, over 75, kind of thing, too. So, I'm at a point I usually have to ask my wife of what your birthday is. Yeah. <laughs> so is this 41 or 42? Yeah. All right. Um, we have several things to get to here. Uh, I'm going we to. We got one more. We thing. still have claims. Yeah, claims. Ah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, they were payable. Oh, Couch say payable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, to approve the claims, and then we have to approve the accounts payable. Okay. So we got any motions sir? I make a motion. We approve the. Accounts payable claims in the amount of one hundred forty-three thousand nine ninety-three ninety-one. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. aye. Um, we don't have any claims. So no, we don't have any. We're okay. Accounts payable. Okay, so we have several things here, new business to get along the way. But I ask a guy to come uh, again, like uh, um, the chief of police there. We have some issues going on at the uh, at the jail, as you know. That jail is over 20 years old now, so I was just there when it was built. I can't remember what it was. Matt, Matt do you remember what year it was built? 96. 96, okay, so it's right on, on 30 years old. I was under the belief that copper tubing lasted forever, but it does not. So we have some major issues with the jail, with the copper tubing. It's going to have to all be replaced. So I asked Matt Steckley, who has uh, been doing the, uh, the specs and, and the, the bidding on these jobs for us, to come and tell us where we are, because it's going to be startling where we are. So let's let him come up and get that done, and then we'll get back to our normal normal pattern of business. I've already spoken to a council member about this, and, and uh, so we know where we are. Oh, I thought there was a chair over there. No worries. Um, There's, just drag, drag one of you are sitting on there if that works for you. You can stand whatever you want to do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll switch it. I appreciate there you go. It. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, well, um, yes. Absolutely, uh, Commissioner Reese bringing up, uh, wanted to get together with you guys and said pop in last minute here today. Uh, update on other projects. So the jail exterior, all that was left was the um, underground uh, drain tile into those boxes. That's all, all 34 completed. Uh, turned out really, really good. We need rain. So all that's left is grading and seeding. So we've got uh, pure soil over the piping which we're leaving like that, we want to get some rain. Seven. I Yeah, I mean, we, if we get in there now and make it look pretty, by next spring you're going to have these really nasty divots. So, uh, it's we're in a drought, there's not much rain going on, not much rain in the forecast. So one, this recently came up, do you, as a board, we're getting late in the year, I think we're going to get a nasty cold snap and it's just going to stay like that. Um, Outside of maybe 10 out of 10 aesthetically, it's just a little amount of dirt where they where they go out to the boxes. Are are we okay with um, chill? Let's get into spring. Let that settle. Throw some seed, and we're good. Or wait for a rain, grade it, seed it. No matter what, I think at this point we're gonna have to seed again in spring, being so late. So um, feedback. Let's start there on that. What do you guys want to do? November 1st is pretty much a deadline on it. It's just going to get eight and everything else. I have no problem holding a small amount of retainers. Correct. A retainer, correct. I would rather get the guys paid for what they've done. We can't control the weather for what they've done. Hold some retainage and have it seated and uh, hardly rake run over it. Some seating done, straw possibly in the spring. Easier to take those amounts of down than to fill the yeah. filming of it. So. Yeah, and, and the, the balance too with, with that contractor is 15, so if you guys want to vote or need to vote or approve, I would say just hold five if okay. you're okay with that. That's as long as you feel like the I want it to be. I, will give them enough incentive to come back. And I've, I've learned through the years that I'd rather hold more than they want, okay. but I know they're going to come back. Right. That's just... Okay. You, they may not like it, but you go too small, it's oh well, and then we're stuck with who. Yeah, that's, that's why I say that. And if these two guys are comfortable with it, I've, I've messed around with enough seed and leveling 
I just don't want, I don't want double work and yeah. where we're at in the year. Um, but we've got some, some paint, leftover paint that the guy who did the exterior, he's going to come and get it. The jail matron's got a couple areas of touch-ups that she saw depending on the sun, so he's going to touch that up. So, yeah, pretty much that um, long project, but we're there. We're, yeah. we're done. I will inform the As long as these two agree with, I have no problem. Yeah. Saying. Okay, excellent. So I'll update them. Um, moving over to the next uh, jail highway, uh, jail highway, highway garage roof. So you've got the barrel sloped roof um, that I'm waiting on one more quote. I wanted to do at least three. Um, multiple have received, I did a full spec RFP on it. Um, multiple eyes have looked at it and just getting people interested at this point. It's kind of like pulling teeth on my end. I got to make sure they're competent, qualified, just not anyone's going to be able to do that. And then who is competent? Hey, are you interested? So, um, let me tell you where we are on that, just so you understand, because the rules have changed the way we understood the rules. We were told once we, in fact, we were encouraged by the uh, in association, Indian Association of County Commissioners that uh, we should move all that money out of ARP into revenue shortfall, which we did with the understanding we could spend it as we need it when we are no longer under deadlines. Now the talk from the state is that we still have to be, have those monies not just Complicated. obligated but contracted by the end of the year. This so, year. Yes, yes, year. So if we're going to replace that roof with ARP funds that we have remaining. There's no issue. Of, we'll need this is literally like a week to week. Okay. Um, yeah, this isn't something that I'm, I'm I on. I just want you to know that yes. we need to have a contract. We have to have a signed contract yeah. for you. So yes, by no doubt about it. I, I, I'll get these quotes, we'll get it to you, and, and at least get a contract in place. Okay. There's no issue with that time frame. Okay. Yes. Well, Susan, and, Susan and I go Friday to yeah, that meeting, Friday, so we'll is. know this week for sure what our rules are. And that may impact also the copy you're going to get tell us about. At least, yeah, that's at least a, a year's one. worth or some portion of that because we want to use some of those funds at least for that as well. And uh, so we would have to have some contract in place of that too by the end of the year. So let, at least some portion of that anyway. Let's do a deep dive on that. Um, give me one second. All right. So did a uh, I I emailed uh, the board the RFP was specs direction. It was a, a pretty robust RFP. I don't know if any of you guys take oh, open that PDF, it. but it was it was really well done. Um, being in that jail for a couple of years, that that jail was built, um, designed by an architect that basically said like no one will ever need to get to this once it's built ever. Uh, so I knew. Let me do a, a really good RFP. Um, and normally I do my tours one at a time. I, I like to just one contract at a time, being it's the jail, respecting everyone's time in the jail, let's all get in. So three parties, there was a, a, a really nice uh, party between all of us there. Um, the sheriff staff took us through and pretty much went, went the way I expected it to. So I did the RFP, several safeguards. Copper's volatile. I said that the Board of Commissioners, I don't know if you guys are even aware of this, but a good safeguard, that we will procure um, linear copper direct. It's on you and your bid to do. We're replacing valves. We're adding a lot of isolation valves. So if we ever have to shut water off, it's being done in much smaller sections instead of half the jail. But the, the valves, the fittings, that was on the contractor, but linear pipe was direct by. However, we set that up, but there's no markup on this linear pipe. If we need a couple trucks to deliver it, because it's in you know 16-foot sections, we'll deal with that. But we're not dealing with markup on linear pipe. It's high enough. Preliminary numbers on copper linear, you are somewhere in the area of one hundred to 125000 in copper alone for this project. The uh, Also in the RFP, I said that all copper is to remain at the jail. The contractor is not allowed to take that off-site and scrap it due to the price of copper. You as the Board of Commissioners, the Sheriff, whoever, you're going to have a very nice pile of copper and you guys do whatever you want with it. But it, I, in my RFP, that is to stay on-site. Um, so, um, did the walkthrough. Uh, the, the building was really built um, like 
without in mind if we have to service this or replace this. I, I'm i under the impression, so two things after doing some due diligence and meeting with the sheriff. Not bring up old news, but here's the why. No, copper should not fail at this scale after 20, 25 years. It just should not. My impression, which it's my opinion alone, there's nothing factual yet, I'm thinking whoever was awarded that possibly used Type N. Type N is, a, is the thinnest copper you can get. I'm thinking there was some Type M used and maybe no one caught it someone 30 years ago trying to save some money. I haven't seen copper fail like that. I have multiple pictures. They're saving the fittings as they break over there. I mean, it's, it's done. Yeah. And then more importantly, I was told that a former sheriff, I don't know what year, how far back, a former sheriff did not like buying salt. He didn't believe in salt or a softener and didn't thought it was a waste of money. So your guy's jail went, and I don't have the name of the sheriff, let alone the years. I'm just hearsay that that jail probably went 10 years without any salt running through. And there you go. So that's, that's probably the main culprit. Um, it, that makes sense. I, I found that out after I said that they use type M. So either way, at least we have a Y. Um, so now let's get into the, the, the gist of it, that this is a, a very large project, uh, meeting with the pros, uh, really doing a deep dive on this. Preliminary numbers came in. Um, basically, I just told everyone involved, hang tight, I got to meet up with you guys. Here's where we're at. I had a, I got three quotes. There was an extremely low number to the fact that I've never had a variance of that low. I mean, I've, I, I do the walkthroughs, everyone sees the same thing, hears the same thing. Now, that jail, if there was ever to be a variance, that would be it. How each you or me looking at it, I think it's much more difficult than you. But either way, this number was, was not normal in terms of low. Did some qualified commercial plumbing contractor, did some digging, Kept probing. I wasn't getting my answer. I'm just trying to, and I let him know if you are awarded this job, there are no change orders. I don't care if you lose 200, 300 grand in the red. You are doing this job for that amount. Are you okay with that? And then the truth came out for, and I won't divulge that company's name, but Matt, if the bulk of the employees have a valid Mexican driver's license that's valid in Mexico, was that will that work? There we go. That's why he came in so low, and I finally got it out of him. So I was now we're to the other two, um, and so basically, you're looking at a million dollars. We're looking at a million dollars with you guys buying the copper. I was told that if we and I did some some on the back end corresponding this, if that was a new jail today. And it unbuilt, and a contra plumbing contractor needed to install all that copper without blinking, out, blinking an eye. They're six to seven hundred. If they were to give a GC a number to do that jail right now without everything being built, and how do we even get to that? It'd be six seven hundred. So the numbers came in like way nasty. Um, and when you do the walkthrough, you really get it. You really, I mean, you, you, you just understand that the, it's, it's, it's really going to be nasty trying to get all that out. I wanted to meet with you guys today on, obviously, I think that the best way to go about this is to break this into sections over the next year, two years. Um, we've got six <coughs> leaks so far. So in the last year or two, we've got six actual leaks that... 24-7 service, come, shut the water off, we, you know, we, we've got to get this leak fixed. I confirm with Matt that it has to be copper, it can't be PEX or... or I was going to say PVC or anything And like so I, I talked to one of the council members, Roy, about that as well, because Roy questioned that too, whether it could be that, but I already asked Matt about it, Matt said so it has to be copper. Roy talked to uh, the attorney, Clutter, uh, he's working for Boone County, Boone County is doing jail also, and they're, they're doing copper, they have to do copper as well, so as I understand it, it has to be copper. And this, I mean, you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water, that's not like your house, I mean, this is, this is heavy, this is like a hospital, I mean, the water you guys use there between your laundry, your kitchen, all the cell blocks, there, there's a lot of water being yeah. used. So we don't have a choice in that material. Yeah, and a lot of large copper. I mean, a lot of this is two, three inch, four inch, third, and then it all has to be re-insulated. The basically, as we were doing the walkthrough, 
the entire ceiling grid has to throughout the throughout the entire jail has to be brought down to even follow the pipe. Some of the pipe, I mean, is 16 foot up, and you maybe have two feet. Once you get up 16 feet to just everything we looked at, and all the cell blocks, they have these massive steel panels. Um, all that plumbing goes behind the walls, well, because it's a cell block and secure for the for the inmates. You've got these huge steel panels that have to come off in sections to try and crawl in there. So what it came down to is, yes, it can be replaced, but like picture just the nastiest existing field condition. So um, I just said, stop, everyone stop. I want to get before you guys. Do you want to break this into five sections? I'll literally go back onto the drawings and we'll, we'll literally break this into five, into three. Uh, what, what do you guys kind of want to do here? And I knew it was bad, but once once I myself got on this ladder and we're looking, it was just like, this is bad. Is there any way we can get ahead of it and try to figure out, anticipate where the worst problems? Does it seem to be worse in certain areas or just hit and miss everything? No, yes, sir. Sporadically, yes, sir. Just where yes, sir. it's going to leak wherever it's going to leak. Yes. Huh? Yes, the, the nice part honestly is you guys have committed to doing this, it has to be done. What's nice is now we have a presence. We now have a presence on site. We're doing that, even if we're doing section A and there's five sections, if we get a leak, we got plumbers there on site. So I think the, the rapid, oh no, I, we're, we're mobilized to, hey, there's a leak there, that stopped the whole thing, prioritize that. And the other thing is the shutoffs that are there. Uh, were lacking, at least if I was to design the building. I think there should have been far more isolation valves, and what isolation valves are there are corroded or gummed up and won't even spin or won't even see. So it's just like, if, what, how do we go about this without disrupting? You have main feeds. You have main feeds. So it's like, for us to add isolation valves, we got to shut the water off and kind of almost initially get... 10, 15 plumbers on site within 24 hours to even, it's a, the, the reason I, I would ask this is you said you thought that there was possibly some thin copper used to try to save money. Did you really verify that? No, and that is, that, that is, that was before I found out about the softener. I'm just saying that, yeah, uh, Commissioner East, when he first mentioned it, for, for the age of that jail, yeah. um, everyone who's heard about this has, has said the same thing out loud, even if you don't understand plumbing. Eesh, that that should go a lot longer. I initially said that would be but a case. You, did, you didn't find it. No, no. And I, I, I will, um, once we start pulling some insulation off, I'll take a look. It, it might be K like it's supposed to be. Um, but if I find M, you guys will be the first to know, and I decide from there. But I don't. That is Any. very careful, Commissioner, with me sick. And I found out about the softener, but I'm just saying that is of my own initial. Why did this fail? So I don't. I'm not looking to get anyone in trouble yet. Let me no, confirm. No. Yes. Any, any recourse on that, Nick? If there is inferior materials we use, you have to look at the contract. What was? Uh, that's always the starting places. Was there a contract? <clears throat> what did the contract yeah. say? But, but then the it, the, years is it? Right. I mean, I, how many years? Thirty years. Ago Almost built. I can't imagine that there's a warranty you know, that, that long. Either. Yeah. But but my thought, the reason for asking <clears throat> is, can we get a handle on it if there is well, if there's, there, rather than K? When you get into it, if you found all that and done it first, you would know that it's most likely the thinner stuff would, go, would fail first right. if you had a way of identifying it. At this point, there's so much there that that would be more like, as we're doing our sections, hey, That's because normally it's scribed on the pipe if it's 30 years and we yep. can't even see it. But again, that, I don't say that to look for ammo on anyone. Well, I just, that was my first, but there, there was, I, I did hear that a sheriff did not use the softener for a long time and that really far more than them that's the cause of premature failure one of the things we had talked about uh, and I, I talked with uh, one of the council members about this too obviously we don't have a million dollars laying around to take care of this project uh, he agreed as we had talked about probably breaking it down over three years so we would probably have to look at a plan of a phase of three phases and we would probably have to leave that you suggest what in, even the sheriff decided what third are we going to do in what sequence and how that would work out. 
that would affect your RFPs as they go out. So whatever you need to do on that, if you guys are in agreement to look in the three year three year phase on that. I think that's the, that's the right Even def- with the ARC money, we just don't know at this point right. how much we've got. Right. But yes. like you said, a million dollars, I just... What, what I can do, sir, is, is hit this hard and fast to get phase one at least under contract by December 31st. Yeah, and like what I have to go through, and don't, that's on me, not on you guys. I, I've always... And I've if we always commit some of that ARC money to that phase one, we could do that by the end of the year and yes. then... And rest of it just be on the council and general fund it. Yes, sir. Do that, then. that puts me under a, a nasty time frame, but I'll, I'll get you guys there. I'll get some them, under contract. Makes them come through with numbers too quickly. So I, I ain't gonna have an issue with that. It's just the to, to literally now schematically and design wise break this down and rip. But yeah, I'll, okay. I'll we're we're end of October. I'm gonna get you guys. I got two months to where you guys need ink to paper. I'll get I'll get you there. Okay. In in summary, I don't want to take more time than we need to. In summary, I think they're saying that we know we have to do it. And we're looking to do it over three over a three year period. Yes, so sir. If you design your your searches with that in mind, does that make sense then to do it that way, do you guys? Yeah. So you're you're good to go. Yes, sir. And then let me let me take a look. Um, we'll do some revisions. I'll be in touch with you guys on the the ins and outs of doing a three year, and we'll yeah. just make it to where I'm not. No one else has come back. I'm not coming back. Like we'll just kind of figure out this agreement that hey. You guys are going to do this now and just consider it done three years from now outside of here's where we're at, approve or don't approve. But yeah, I'll run with a turnkey over. Okay. I'm not going anywhere. I'll, I'll be around three years from now. Appreciate it. Awesome. Matt. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thanks. Okay, folks, sorry for those delays, but those things have just come up all of a sudden that we had to get lined up. So now let's go back to the regular agenda that you're looking at. So in our new business, we have a uh, service agreement with Purdue. We paid last year. I didn't know. Okay. I, I don't know if this hundred twenty-seven thousand is close to last year or not. There's no extensions not here. I don't see anybody. I can't remember. I either. can't remember the number, but. It is what it is. Yeah. We've got to have that program. Yeah. So not much change in it. Not, yeah. other, not many other options. So. I guess that being said, I make a motion we enter into the agreement with Purdue Extension for $127,510 for the contract. I'll second it. I'll bear say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Ryan Langacre, is that the way you say that, Wellspring? Loniker. Loniker, okay. Yeah. Good German Swiss name. Yeah. So, I believe you guys have most of my materials, but I want to make sure. You had all of them, so I okay. printed some, some more materials. And here's a copy for you as well. Um, Beth has been wonderful to work with. Um, a few months ago, Glenn and Amanda Harrell contacted me at Wellspring and said, hey, we'd like to install a solar panel system. Um, and we figured out exactly what they wanted. They're looking for a system where they will have electricity uh, no matter what. So if the grid goes down long term, they will still have electricity. Um, they have a 23-year-old daughter they care for um, that has um, some serious medical uh, condition that uh, she needs electricity and, and cooling specifically for. Um, this system is a residential system. There's no commercial use at all. In fact, the system will not export to the grid. All the electricity will be used on the property. So it's zero export. There's no interconnection with the REMC. Um, I stopped by the REMC to talk to them today to let them know how the system works and to explain it a little bit to them. Um, there are 34 solar panels on a ground mount, so I included a, a picture of a, a ground mount, right? The inverters are solar inverters. They have a zero export feature where they, you can set them for zero export. We're actually going to set them physically so it's impossible to export using the inverters. The inverters have uh, three, in, three inputs. Right? They have a solar input to accept electricity. They have an input from the grid and they have a generator input so you can have a portable generator or a gen set send electricity into the inverters to charge batteries and run a critical load. Um, the Heralds do not have a generator right now, so we're planning on using the gen input into the inverters 
for the electricity actually from the grid, which means you just physically will not, the units will not export back into that line um, because you never want your solar panel system to, to export electricity into your generator. You burn it up and destroy it. So there's no uh, export of electricity there. Um, I want you to understand, yes. Luke, because Luke's in there as well. Yeah. We are not at any point saying that we are opposed to ever exporting, ever having commercial capacities. We just haven't reached that point yet. We do not have the ordinance in place that we've been highly recommended by the state to have in place. Mm -hmm. I have met with uh, several counties uh, along these lines about what ordinances we should. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to have our attorney write ordinances. We don't know what we're talking about. He'd have to research all that. So we're trying to accumulate that. We need to step it up and pick it up because we can get more pressure on that. Luke, you know how many panels your mom and dad have? Oh, gosh. It's probably was 30. Really? Because I, I thought 34 sounded a lot. I got a call from the assessor today that, according to the state, that size, of uh, they may have to, even though they don't export to become commercial, they may have to assess the property at a commercial. Is your mom and dad's property assessment change from a residential to a so. commercial? Okay. It's kind of funky because... 35 years ago, it was like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's like 22 now. Their efficiency jumped a bunch because I got some size for me. Okay. It was half that size. Because she's so, being told by the state that at a certain level, and she didn't recall what that number was, but she thought we were at that number pretty close. 37, I think, is the number she thought. After that point, they're required by the state to assess that as commercial property, even though they're not exporting commercially. Is that, you ever heard of that? Uh, there's an Indiana law that. You know, that a property owner can file with the county that protects against property uh, assessment for the solar. So there's an exemption for property tax assessment for residential. Okay. So if you're a commercial business, yeah, it's, it's different. But if you're a private citizen and it's residential solar, there's actually an <coughs> exemption form that your parents should fill out and, and, and give to the county assessor. See, those are the things we need protect. to learn. Cause we, we're, this yeah. is a whole new game for us as well. And I don't want the impression to ever get out. Luke was concerned about. Now, I know Luke since he's, since I left him on the bus years ago. I've known Luke a long time. Yeah. Um, we're not out to impede anybody. We just got to make sure we do this right when we do this. Absolutely. There's no going back once you've done something with someone. So you got to make sure you got all the ducks in a row and everything's going right. And I was I was coming today to kind of open that discussion about how we can move forward with their project, and still you guys could do what you need to do as far as. We have talked to a couple other solar companies as they came, and I can't give them the names, I don't recall. Mm -hmm. They were going to send sample ordinances that they have dealt with with the other counties. We have never heard anything from any of them. <laughs> do you have such uh, access to such ordinances that counties use yeah, that make I it think. able for you to do your job and for us to do our job at the same time? Those are the things we need yeah. to see. Yeah, so uh, we are from Wellspring. We're in Shipshawana, Indiana, so we're in LaGrange County. LaGrange County just redid their... Um, their ordinances, um, their UDO, and it was just approved. In fact, I had a, a ground mount project that we were waiting for the UDO to be approved so we didn't have to go to variance. And so as soon as it was approved, then we were able to pull the permit. Do they uh, have restrictions between UDO. commercial and residential? Are they allowed to do commercial up there and yes. export? Yes, you can do commercial. There's a distinction between commercial when you're uh, using it for self-consumption. So if you're a large factory, you use a lot of electricity, you're using the majority of it for self-consumption, and you send some extra back into the grid and get a bill credit, that's completely different than a feed-in tariff. A feed-in tariff is you, you build your system and all it does is export into the grid and you're selling the electricity to the electric company or the electrical uh, provider. Right? So that's the large solar farms that have investors that have millions of dollars and want the tax 30% tax credit and want 50 acres or 100 acres or 200 acres to, to put solar across, that's a feed-in tariff. Okay. Um, and you have to be a pretty big engineering company and you have to have a whole lot of money and you have to have more than four people on your install crew. Sure. <laughs> that's what we have. We have sure. four people on our install crew. We never, we never dream of doing a solar field, right? Sure. We do residential and commercial okay. so we do some small commercial as well um, so we look I'll look at self-consumption so where the resident the person or the business is going to consume most of the electricity and that's what we don't want to impede we don't want to impede residents providing for themselves and we have to mm -hmm. just protect ourselves 
that we don't get even any big back sell coming in until we figure out how we're going to do this. Do yeah. you know in their ordinance did they put a percentage of what they was allowed to feed back in the ordinance? Was no, there actually a percentage. I believe it's just uh, whether it's a feed and tariff or the, really the size. So like if customer can show, hey, this is how much electricity I use. This is the size of my system. The utility companies like uh, Indiana, Michigan, um, the REMC, they won't let you go above a hundred percent. They don't want more than a hundred percent of the electricity that. Yeah that's being used to be produced because they only want a little bit of excess. Yeah. They want most of it to be um, to be consumed, right? Okay. So I would have to send you that. I know my project engineer, Jason, worked closely with uh, the Planning Commission as the new UDO came out, and they had several meetings along the way where they had public input. Um, but yeah, we could, I could help. Yeah. It would behoove you to help exactly. us do that. Is that something you can do to us? Can you send that yes. stuff to us? Yes, I can get you a new UDO. I believe it's online now. Okay. Or I can get a PDF version of it. Luke, you were shaking your head. Did you have a different percentage there? I actually kind of came up with a list that I want to present to you guys because I'm with okay. an agreement. Let's keep the commercial out, but still allow the residential. Yeah. I think what you guys have done so far is yeah. you've attempted to do that, but you threw a big net and caught everything. Yeah. Uh, we put limits on the total power produced, um, percentage of your parcel that can be covered by solar. Because if you buy 200 acres, they want to cover all of it. Uh, max system size, total earnings from a year, uh, power must route to the home, then to the grid. So kind of forcing the home to be the middle point. Uh, must be owned by a resident of Park County. Uh, any extra power must be accredited as a bill credit. Uh, I think, you know, putting these in, and you're going to have a hard time jumping through those hoops to try and get a commercial in. Yeah, you, I, even, I don't think you could. Even crediting, you're still getting in the commercial. That's why we can't, we can't allow that yet. I don't think the intent for many of us, I don't think, was to keep the residents from what happened there. And we have a lot of Amish who, are, who have mm. solar. So that's not the, none of them that I know have 34 panels or 37 panels, but but and I don't know the what the requirements are, how efficient they are. So that I, that I don't know. So... Just to let you know, Wellspring, we are solar, but we also do metal manufacturing. So all the buggies you see in the area, their leaf springs are manufactured at our facility, right? So we do leaf springs for buggies. We do grills and grill cabinets. Um, we do custom racking for tool Can't sets. Can you figure out a way on those springs to generate electricity as they <laughs> Not at all. But Norman, the, the father of the two sons who now run the company, he's the one who figured out how to heat temper them so they were still flexible yet still strong. Um, so we have a, we run completely off-grid because we're owned by an Amish family. Okay. We have a 300 kW generator that could, could power your high school. Personally, I'm excited about the residential so, use of solar. I, I, would, I would look at that myself yeah. to do that. We also have um, 36 panels in a battery bank, and when we shut our manufacturing down for the day at 2 or 3 p.m., um, our front office runs on just solar in the battery bank. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you will actually you will see the Amish with larger systems as they start replacing their generators, because right yeah. now they're burning diesel or natural right. gas or propane right. to run their electricity for their businesses. And I'm all, I'm all for that. That's fine. The only really resistance we get are from people that are worried that all the farmland is going to be sucked up. But but to me, I can speak personally, for me, if it's my farmland, if I want to choose to produce electricity instead of producing corn, I should have that option to do that on my land. Mm -hmm. But we get into a discussion about that. Yeah, so. that's, that's, so, the, uh, that's where you guys come in with yes, the ordinance and the debate. Yeah. Um, with this system, it is, how many acres do you have, Glenn? 26. 26. Yeah. I have 26 acres. Yeah. This is oh, 30. Geez. 34 panels on 26 acres. So if you look at the very last couple pages are the, uh, the site map. So if you're looking at the site map, you can see the little itty bitty squares of the solar panels on their huge property of 26 acres. Well, I'm guessing that you or Glenn and uh, Amanda, yes, this is Glenn and yes, Amanda. Sir. we would deeply appreciate any, as yeah, you go through this process, if you find ways you think you should, and you too, Luke, find things we should have done differently, or what we you think we need to know? Tell the next people that you need to look at this. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind sharing that information with us, we don't want to be able to stomach block to you mm -hmm. well, at thank all. You. Thank you, because my daughter. Oh, we understand. Is, she's really sick, and um, it just came to our attention that we have we have not covered this issue. That right. if we ran out of power, what would happen to her? Yep. And uh, since it hit us, and we realized it, we've been anxious. 
understand. And uh, we're from Asheville, North Carolina, and our family's there, and we see what they're going through. Sure. So um, that man right there is a blessing to us. Well, I hope he's a blessing and to us. He's going to get some stuff. So. He will be, I mean, I want you to know he's... It's he's a learning process money. for all of us. On we, the money. Why would you not money. talk to the people who know? I mean, I understand there are snake oil salesmen. I'm not saying you are, but there are snake oil salesmen <laughs> right. out there. You have to worry yeah. about that kind of thing. Right. That's why I want to hear from you guys how how you go into this I will, process. I, and watch I'm just thankful. Work. Thankful for him. Good. Well, it's good to know. He's knowledgeable. His customers reviews. I am a researcher. I researched him down to an article he wrote to get to see what kind of person he was. Found out what people thought of him because, you know, this is a big amount of money for us. We don't throw money around. <coughs> yeah, we got to take care of our daughter when we're dead. She's got to have money to survive. She's 23 I, years old and we can't waste it on just some snake oil. Well, I'd be hard pressed to tolerate someone telling me I can't do that on my property if I went and find some other alternative on my property. Right. I understand not messing with the grid and commercial. I understand oh, that. No. Mm -hmm. But on my property, It'd be tough if somebody tell me what I can and can't do on that. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm not affecting anybody else. So I would sure like to hear along the process how it goes. Everything, every bit. And you know what? You're welcome everything. to come and see it. I would love to come see it. And yeah. uh, just see how it functions. And you, you've got one too. You said you're and the reason that's important to us and his parents too, because what we get asked questions about those, and what do we know? We don't do that. Right. And so I have a good friend down in Sullivan County. They put in some huge fields down in Sullivan County. He's mm -hmm. having kind of as a commissioner. And he's kind of having some second guesses now on Why? that maybe we should have done that, maybe we shouldn't have done that, but they've already done it. We don't want to get in that boat where they've already done it now. Man, I wish we hadn't, you know. We, we need to take our time on this. Why but in the process of taking our time, we don't want to impede homeowners from being able to do what they want to do on their, on their property. Right. That's very good to hear. That's a blessing. We, unfortunately, are expected to do it right, and we've got to find out how to do it right when we do it. So right. we, we can't, can't mess it up and come back and fix it later. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. So Okay. I appreciate you guys. No, unless you guys have anything, or Nick, you have anything? Any questions on that? No, I, more so power to you. I think just I've been working with Best um, as far as steps mm -hmm. for us to go forward with it. Like I have their, I have availability on our install crew schedule for November fourth. You've been told that we have more touring in place by what you've been told. That more touring is for commercial, commercial, oh commercial, not for you guys. So if he's not selling to the grid, it's good to go. We're not. Or no, we're not. Not. selling. It's not commercial in our book. Collecting. Well, supply the amount of RMC is able to pay, should be able to go. Should yeah. So. yeah. Unless the Planning Commission has some reason not to allow that, and I can't imagine what that could be. Okay. It's on your property. You're not affecting anyone else. Okay. But you don't really need anything. We don't much. have to approve you to go ahead and no. do it. Great. As long as you're not doing it for commercial. Not doing it for commercial. Not at all. And the, yeah, the, uh, actually, your, your ordinance is uh, written in 1976. Is that the last time it was updated? The planning and zoning. The moratorium was issued within the last three months, months or so. Yeah, yeah, last yeah. year or so. Okay, so yeah, with the moratorium just being commercial, right. I don't right. think we even need a building permit to be able to install uh, solar. Yeah, for uh, tax purposes. For yeah, you probably will still need to. But there's not anything that's standing in your way from that process, I guess. Okay. It's, so it's so that would be an argument between you and the assessor how that how that property is, is going to work. She said that after a certain level, she's required by the state to assess it at commercial rates rather than residential. I'll, I'll we have her. nothing to do with that. We don't know about that. I'll get her the form. Yeah, <laughs> you, you'll still want to talk to the building people and the assessor and all those people, but they needed to weigh in on the moratorium. That's okay. why you were here. Okay. Just, since you're here, let me say real quick why that moratorium came in place. We were advised by the state to do that. Montgomery County got into a struggle where the solar private companies came in. They started making contracts. They, they started making progress. And then the county came and said, we're, we're not going that way. We're not going to do that in those areas. And so they sued yeah. the county. The county eventually won, but they advised to prevent that mess, make sure you've got Just everything right. lined up before you go down that path. All so right. that's where we are. Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. I will continue working with Seth then to move forward. I look forward to hearing from you. See, see the place. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'll get you a ground kind of UDL. It's it's rather detailed and yeah some some of the ground mounts the size of the ground mount. Mm -hmm. um, once you reach a certain size, then it requires variance. Okay. Um, it, which is just going to the variance board. Okay. All right. Elkhart County has a similar similar um, process, right? Where I installed. We installed a rather large uh, solar panel system. Um, is a 36 36 kW. So that was uh, 450 watt panels. 
So it was two Solarks, six arc batteries. It was big. Are you I, speaking English? Looks <laughs> <laughs> back there nodding. It was 80 panels. Okay, 80 panels. 80 okay. panels, right? So it was 40 wide because there's one row mm -hmm. or 40, another row of 40. It is each panel is three and a half feet, so it's 100, 140 feet across the backyard. Okay. All right. The resident, the customer I had, had a, a home with a walkout basement, and he had a pool that he has enclosed that he heats and cools year round. Wow. So his bill was seven hundred dollars a month, wow. right, for his electricity, and um, we installed his panels. We actually installed installed uh, sixty eight of them, right, and set it all up and started running it for about a month or so. And they called me up and said, "Hey, I bought an electric vehicle. Can I install twelve more?" Mm. And those twelve more put us right at the edge of. Um, we had to get special permission from. Elkhart County and their plan commission because of the size of the array and length of it. So no, you no. could put you could put requirements on the size of the arrays too um, that may trigger a variance okay. with the understanding that you should get approved because you're using it for self-consumption. Right. But you're still gonna need to get that variance because of how big it is. Okay. So you can, things we need you to can know. do some things like that. Yeah. Elkhart I know what County. the commercial you have to talk about setbacks, you gotta talk about guards so you can't see it, and those all those kinds of things so, as well. Um, on the commercial solar fields you might as well just ban them and be away with it. And be done yeah, you like that part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, allow it for commercial commercial self use for businesses, right? Because you want yep. your auto shop and your local library and the fire station yeah. and Every, you know, anybody who has a, a factory, you want them to be able to run the factory and produce their own electricity and save money on the On bills. a sunny day, save money. I understand. Yeah. Just ballpark. I don't have a clue. On, I'll say it's 30 panels I need in my house, for, and you're going to set up for nothing to operate. What kind of money are we talking about? So, grid tie for residential, you're talking somewhere between $10,000 and $40,000. Okay. Depends on how much electricity you use. The okay. smaller homes a lot of, done a lot of $15,000 systems recently. Okay. If you're going to add batteries to it and you're going to run it as hybrid, so it has off grid capability, you're starting at $25,000 and you're going to maybe to $70,000. Okay. Most of my homes are in the 40, $40 to $50,000 range. Okay. Transmission. Residential. How far away from the house can, can the panels be transmission wise? As long as, as far as you want to pay for that wire to get bigger and bigger. Okay. Because I do have one, one array that's 700 feet from the home. Okay. And it was seven thousand dollars just to get the electricity from the array back to the house, okay. because of the wiring and size of it. Okay. So, if you're gonna do like a Studebaker Museum in South Bend. That's about one hundred eighty thousand okay. dollars. And it's gonna cover. It's only covered twenty percent of their electricity. Wow. <laughs> so. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the info. Appreciate you're welcome. Good luck, you guys. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay. Um, Next, we have uh, highway bids to, uh, not to open, right, just to approve? Just to just approve. publication. Just, yes. Yeah. Supply yeah. dealers, correct, yeah. Yes. So we have a letter to go out, so I guess we need to approve this uh, being, uh, being accurate and ready to go. Bitumous materials, tires, tubes, trouble. Yep. Well, Approved the notice to for the supply dealers for the county highway department. And I'll second that. I'll very say I. Okay. We have a copy. Oh, you have to start yep. there. You're already working on it. You're quick, and you're on top of stuff. Okay. 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 before we move on to RICO contract. Um, since we have to have this money committed by the end of the year, there's a project we talked about before, but I'd like to go ahead and get that committed. Down to seeking numbers, I would like to have the interior doors now of the courthouse refinished like the outside doors were. Mm -hmm. We just need one side, we just need the outside of the of that second, second door going in. So I would like uh, to uh, authorize, um, well, I guess, nothing until we get numbers, but 
I guess I just really need for you guys to know that I'm seeking bids on that. If that's okay, we, yeah, we got we, we got a we got a letter out to the guy that uh, did it last time before. Who's going to give us a number on those? And Don's got a plan on how we can do that. So if that's okay, we'll plan on doing that, and then we'll commit whatever uh, art money funds we have to do that. If that's okay to use art money for that, I'll, I'll plan on that. That won't affect the general fund that way to get that accomplished. There was something else I had. Give me just a minute here. Um, we talked about the Thorpe Ford Bridge. You're, now on the uh, roof, has now blown up on one part of the Thorpe Ford. You guys are still working, looking to decide that you're going to be able to get that on the roof. No, but he I'm was supposed there. to have somebody. Okay, yes. he's going to get somebody. I don't know if you knew anybody to do that or not. Actually, I had asked Luke when he was here at the last meeting if he was going to talk to. What's the guy's name? Uh, <coughs> You, just, you said his name. Yeah, Starts with a B, doesn't it? Barney. 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 Yeah, Barney. Yeah. So, so I guess we just need to send him a text or yeah. I may even have Barney's yeah. Would you Could you do that? I'll, I'll get a hold of him. Yeah. And, uh, I'll write myself a note. Okay. I'll get a hold of Barney and see if he's going to take it. And ask if we need just to repair it or if we need to replace it. Yeah, I will. Thank you. All right. The burn ban is still in place because it's as still dry. Yet, not looking like it's going to be. Um, still dry. All right, that's all the things that I had. So we'll move on to Old Business Rico. Had changes to the original contract? Yeah, there's another finisher and bridge unit needed by the EMS. It's going to raise the contract to another $12.70. Okay, I make a motion we approve that. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Okay. All right, do we have any department heads here? There is. You need your signature. Do we have any uh, public comment? Anybody here from the public wants to have a moment. No? Mr. Martin, officer, what's back there with you? Just watching. You just spectating today? Yeah. yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, I wanted to know the status on Ron Roberts cleaning up his property out yeah. on the 36, old 36. I don't know. On that, you have to talk to the plan, the plan commission on that. It's, I don't know if you've, I didn't make the last meeting, Nick, but have they, did you make the last planning? Yeah, I was there. What was the question? Sorry, I was... The cleanup on 036 where they had been dumping, has that even been addressed? We've had... I only know it based on names. I mean, if we know the property owner, I can what tell you. What was the name? Robert. Yeah, Ron Roberts. Does that Maybe. So that was like an ordinance violation then, uh, right? I don't remember the whole story. I think it was. It seems like it, any that. ordinance violations I've received from the county have been filed. So it's whether Enterprises. And we, of course, with Cassie not being there, we're going to have things that's going to be. Yeah, I didn't know if you were aware that uh, the, the plan is. Commission director, she passed away. She was sick and passed. Yeah. And so we're in the process of changing people. So maybe the delay on pursuing those things, but just so you know. I've talked to Beth and I went to the meeting at the fairgrounds also. Okay, did they get covered at the meeting? Oh, yeah, they let me talk. Oh, good. Good. Okay. <laughs> and Nick said he's filed whatever he was requested to file according to ordinances. So, so that's why he's checking on that, see where we are with that. There's a court date. What was the name? Not Bumblebee, but the other name? Ron Roberts. Well, he's got yeah, it's okay. set for December 3rd at 1 30. Oh, no, that's a different one. Hold on. I bet they've just labeled that wrong. Would it be Ronnie Roberts? Probably. Yeah, December 3rd at 1 30. But they, instead of listing it out of the county, the courthouse listed it under the town for some reason. So the court date is December 3rd at 1.30? Yeah, let me double check the court's calendar and just make sure it's the right one. Okay. Uh, Who actually placed the uh, road counters this year? That's right. They did it again for us. I don't We haven't got a report yet. They haven't taken them up yet, but that, uh, that they'll come report to uh, CBC actually paid for them, so like last year. I. If we got a couple minutes here, I had a phone call Sunday from the guy that gives uh, 
helicopter rides. Mm -hmm. And he asked me to go up. He asked me if I could get a hold of you to take you up. And I couldn't. Of course, I knew he was sure. up here working. Uh, sometime we need to sit down and have some meetings, get together. Over the last few years, it amazes me how many ideas he's come up with. We're bottlenecks are when we have problems where we don't. He sees things from a different angle uh, than he, we do. He took me around two different times and he'd stop and show me there to three-way stop coming into Bridgeton. From mm -hmm. Bridgeton Road, Jeffers Ford. Mm -hmm. He stopped there for a little bit and he said, you got to see what these guys do. Well, three people come up and stop and there's big lines and one of them pull up to go and the other think it's his turn. Then they'd stop and it's a massive bottleneck right there. His suggestion was to rent a temporary stoplight for them 10 oh, days. Good idea. Because he thinks that a big percent of these people are probably from the city where they're used to roundabouts sure. or they're used to stop and go. And if you got a light, tell us 30, 40, I'm going to hurry through. Why don't we just build a roundabout there? <laughs> I don't know. We're up there. That's probably one of the few places we could do But on the counters, the reason I ask about them, I think he missed the boat. When he took me down there, he told me school road, the gravel road, has actually been heavier, heavier traveled this year than uh, high banks of Thursday. Interesting. It, it was, and with all that dust, when you flew over the road, you would lose sight of their tail lights. I don't know how they kept really? having the head on. Okay. I mean, it was just, I, I went on the side by side multiple times from. A one mile stretch from my barn where the cows are to my driveway, and you count 20, 24 cars any given time of the day. Wow. So I don't know how how much we missed there by not having one. Hmm. Well, yeah, and, worth looking at. And that, that can't be that expensive to rent that. No, I don't. Because they make construction sites all the time. But we're definitely going to have to probably look in if that road stays that busy. We're going to look in some kind of dust control if yeah. it's dry and they're yeah. calling for dry to keep from having some Works head on collision. So we'll get the numbers hopefully this time through the CBC <coughs> say, on the road account. Okay. Anything else? Anybody have a. Anything else to bring De up? December 3rd at 1 30 is the okay. court date on that. December yeah. 3rd in the courthouse. Was there a motion to go adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Yep, second that. All fair, Sarah. Right. Okay. Thanks, folks, for coming. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it.